Hey guys, I am back here with Brandon Phillips, and we are going to talk some uh, some fitness and programming. So it's Garage Fitness Online. So the thing that he and I have started to help you guys out there in the world that have home gyms, either in their garage or their basement, and are thinking, I'm kind of tired of doing this on my own. I need something to follow that makes some sense, and I'd like a community. So the the value of having a situation in your house is awesome except for the fact that you lose accountability and motivation. You tend to not do this stuff. So it's a weird thing. It's easy to get to, yet you don't get to it. Whereas you have, if you have a class, then you typically are motivated by those people to show up, but it's not always easy to show up. So recently I actually followed Brandon's lead. He has a 24 seven access at your gym, right? Yes. And so I just put that in and for years, like 17 years, I was like, Hell no, I'm not doing that. But a couple of members have said some things. Brandon has said some things. I'm like, all right, we're going to do this thing so people can get in there. But you guys have this in your basement, have this in your garage. You could do this on your own, but you're looking for programming and a community. We're building that out now. I suspect it's going to take us a year to really hit our stride, but you got to start somewhere. So what I wanted to do today, I know last week was like no real uh, math and science. It was not what we do. It was just fun talk. Today is we're going to go through... Um, the workouts that are planned in there so you can see what it would look like um, with me being the, uh, the 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 devil's advocate or the dumb guy asking all the dumb questions. I know you're going to be like, Andy, you know that. I know. I'm just asking just because somebody out there is probably going to ask the question. So <clears throat> Brandon has been, pro how long have you been programming? Dude, I'm for a very long time. <laughs> So we can't even count it in years. He's got to go with four score and nine year ago is what. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably since 2007 or eight, I was doing stuff prior to CrossFit. Obviously, I was a strength conditioning coach before this. And so I have that background and then uh, started CrossFit, what, 2009, end of 2008, started doing CrossFit-ish stuff. But uh, even before that, I I would say that I was doing more of a CrossFit style program, just not not um uh, not like a lot of the skill work but just the intensity work and whole body training and all that right kind of stuff. well it's a it's a i am going to be fascinated to see what it looks like in like 30 years when the idea the methodology of crossfit is out there and the hack that is in like when you and i so you guys have to remember imagine this and some of you guys are as old as us well i'm, I'm really old you see the gray hair i'm like 76 I so, right here. You just don't see. You just see it. <laughs> so what do they say? It either turns loose or turns gray. When you and I are upwards in the 70s and 80s, and we've been doing this our whole life, we may not look like Lou Fregno, who looks awesome, by the way, but we're gonna have mobility, we're gonna have longevity, we're gonna have these things, and and there's gonna be like like actual data because we log everything to see does this really work? I mean, the answer is yes especially if you do it smart, which is what we're going to do. So hopefully you guys can see the screen that's up and we're going to cover this. So this is the week of the 14th. We won't do the 14th because that was yesterday. You already went by, but we've got some days that are up here. So if you're looking at this, you can see this is a podcast as well as a YouTube video. So you can, you know, if, if you want to see what we're doing, you got to go uh, look at it on uh, uh, YouTube. Look for Andy McCann 42 and you'll see it. Otherwise you can listen to it on podcast. I'll try to do my job of describing it. But I'm um, just realized we are looking at something. So I've got Wattify pulled up. So yes, when you join us, you get an account with Wattify. There's no extra charge for that. We just get you in there. And um, right now we're doing that 60 days. Anyone can sign up and then help us build the system out. There's holes and, and, and potholes and things that we haven't thought of. And you guys are going to help us find those. So thank you. So we're looking at this program. You've got this plotted out for an entire week. Now, I noticed first thing is Sunday is off. Is Sunday rest day? Sundays are rest days. Okay. Or so you that's can do a makeup day if you missed a workout. Come in and make it up. Pick out one of the endurance workouts, strength, anything. Sunday, okay, so game on. There starts the first question is, all right, so Sunday is my day off, but it's not my personal day off, so I can shift things around. Is there any particular thing that you would shift? Like, hey, this is an easy one if you move this to that, or it's just like, let me let me, let me me say it like this. <clears throat> Let's say Wednesday the 16th. I, I don't know. I got jury duty, so I went to court. Do I just push everything back one day, or do I – take the 16th and put it on the 20th, you know, take the Wednesday and put it on su Sunday. What would you do? I don't know. It just depends on the week and the workout and what's going on. I mean, this Wednesday's workout is definitely the, the one hard workout. Oh. Of the week. So uh, if you want to challenge yourself, yeah, I would push it back until Sunday 
or maybe you just push it, maybe, maybe pick it up Thursday, then push everything else back. It just depends what your goals are. Okay. You know, if you want to get better at CrossFit, do a CrossFit one. You want to get strong, do a bound build. You want to get a better endurance, do an endurance workout. Find your weakness and go after it. Now, hey, so yes, and it took me 17 years of doing this to actually come up to with what you've already just said, which is, it, it depends. The real answer to all of this is aim towards the thing that you're fixing. As, as Brandon just said, what is your goal? What are you trying to improve? If you want to go to CrossFit events, well, then there's a thing. You got to work on some skills. Usually it's the thing you suck at most. Don't suck at it the most and build that thing up. If you just want to be like most of us, harder to kill. I mean, really any of these are going to work. You need to move. And Brandon's laid this out perfectly. Okay. So we've got uh, four different options in here. We're going to cover three of them today. You're going to see in this list, uh, there's build, compete, or competitor, endurance, and perform. So the first thing we're going to jump into is I'm going to click into um, uh, uh, perform or performance. So let's go with, I think I have it on the 15th. Oh, I did it on the 16th. Let me back up one day. So we actually talk about today. So today's Tuesday, the 15th. So talk to me about what's in here. And let me ask you this. I own a gym, you own a gym. Hopefully you guys are listening. You're going to your own home gym. But if you're going to a gym and you're like, hey, what are they going to coach in class? Does this show up in class or do the other stuff show up in class? Like what do your coaches coach? This is what shows up in our class, the bound performance. This is what okay. we follow on a day-to-day basis in-house. Now we try to touch every, every bit of fitness that you can possibly imagine from short to long strength, endurance, everything above. I mean, it's CrossFit. That's it. That's what we do. Now all you're doing is trying to get super fit. Now, so tell me about this one right here. So what are we doing today on the 15th? All right. So this is a dot-com workout. I'm a big fan of following dot-com. I've done it my entire CrossFit career. Even when we were competing, we would still look at dot-com workouts. We'd find one or two a week, and we'd probably do them. Okay. On top of our other training that that we were following at the time. So that, uh, I'm always like falling on there, especially now that they got guest uh, programmers coming in doing like two to three weeks at a time. I really like that because then you get to see what other people are doing. You get to see, get some new ideas, some fresh ideas, some really great workouts. And especially if they align with what we have programmed anyways coming up. So today was a dot com workout from October 24th, 800 meter run, then 25 kipping pull ups. I love kipping pull ups and not butterfly pull ups. Uh, and we program those specifically this time of year, generally leading up to about November. Then we start putting in butterfly, uh, butterfly pull-ups or people that want to compete more. But we got this from Julie Fouché way back in 2010 and 11 when she was coached by Doug Chapman, who used to do like, what was it, hybrid training up in Michigan. Doug was a very, very good coach, still a good coach. He's a great coach. But he talked about the off-season they would never do butterfly pull-ups, him or his programmer, him and him or his athletes, because it just puts unnecessary stress on your shoulders. Yeah. Especially when you do like a Murph, then you got a hundred pull-ups and all of a sudden you're burned, you're burned out for the rest of the week. Instead of doing like volume work or like slow work of, you know, say five pull five butterfly pull-ups every 30 seconds for 10 minutes. That's a hundred butterfly pull-ups, but it's way different than you doing max effort sets like this. Right. Oh, for sure. And uh, way different. I'm a big fan of kipping pull-ups because kipping pull-ups, they transfer over to toes to bar. They transfer over to ring muscle-ups, bar muscle-ups. They transfer over to legless rope climbs. They transfer over more than butterfly pull-ups in the CrossFit space. And what do we say? Everything is everything. So if you get better at one thing, that's going to help other things get better as well. So that's 800 meter run, 25 kipping pull-ups, 800 meter run, 25 strict pull-ups, 800 meter run, 25 weighted strict pull-ups. Now, I just really like that workout. I was, I was uh, programmed perfectly. And so we just put that in for this work. And also, let me ask you a, let me ask a, a while, you're going to see a lot of strict pull-ups. Let me ask you a dumb question here. Okay. So <clears throat> I see, I mean, I, I already, I, I know the answer, but we're going to go run. We're going to come in fatigue on our shoulders. We got those pull-ups. The pull-ups are getting harder as we go. So I can't do them that fast. And then I got weighted pull-ups at the bottom. How, where, how, how am I using dumbbells to weight these things? What am I doing with that? What, tell me what I need to do. It just depends on the equipment that you got. So if you got dumbbells, just put them between your knees, put them at your ankles. And if you can reach, go up. If you don't have dumbbells, you can put a med ball down there. You got 10 pound, 14, 20 pound med ball. Do that. 
And then if you don't have any of those, or if you can't do weighted pull-ups, but you can do strict pull-ups, do strict pull-ups. And then there's also like scaled versions down in here too, down at the bottom, or if you click on the click on the screen, it'll tell you like what exactly to do uh, in this situation uh, and depending on where you're at uh, ability-wise. But that's a big problem. Like a lot of people, we have some people in the gym that uh, that come from other gyms and their coaches are just kip or just do this or just scale down. If you have the time, for some people, this workout would be 800-meter run, let's say four minutes on average. 4 8, 12, they do unbroken kipping pull-ups. That's 12 and a half minutes, 12, 40, 25 strict pull-ups, doing two to three sets. So now you're looking at maybe 14 minutes, 14 and a half minutes in. And then 25 weighted pull-ups, say it takes two to three minutes to do that because they have to do it in four sets, five sets. Now they're looking at a 16 and a half to 19 minute workout just for this. That's somebody that's probably pretty fit. Now, if you're not fit and you can't do that, this could turn into a 40 minute workout. And a lot of people get upset or they feel like they're left behind. But hey, if you don't have strict pull-ups, work on strict pull-ups. Right. You can only do maybe your max set is like five. Sorry, dogs are barking. That's okay. This is real life, man. This is what real life does. Done. <laughs> Come here. Now, the question is, do your dogs hunt coyotes? Yes. No. They do. Good. Okay. I like those dogs then. Yeah. They're done. <laughs> but, they, uh, but that, um, and it, I just tell people all the time, like, if you want to get better at strict pull-ups, you got to do strict pull-ups. So if you don't do like three to four, let's just triple that. Go to 12 or 15. And now you have to do these small sets working up there and you're getting great work. So now you've gone from three pull-ups, but you've done 30 pull-ups in the workout. So now you've 10X'd the amount of strict pull-ups that you've done right. that you do outside. And it's like, everybody loves David Goggins. So I'm going to use him for an example. And he did the world, he did the pull-up world record, strict pull-up world record. Um, that in and of itself, I think he had to do 1,400 pull-ups in an hour, 24 hours, maybe more than that. Anyways, I can't remember exactly how many pull-ups he had to do. It was thousands. You can look it up. But he was like, he did the whole Rocky mentality where Mickey's talking to Rocky about training for a fight. And he says, you know, you got a fifth, you got a 15 round, you got a, a 45 minute fight. You got to train for 45,000 minutes. <laughs> so basically he took his strict pull-ups and uh, yeah, 7,800 pull-ups. So he, he did like, he, I think he calculated, <laughs> he did like, um, it was close to 30,000 pull-ups to do 78,000 pull-ups in 20, 24, in, yeah. in 24 hours. So that's why you have to like sometimes approach these things. Yeah, it takes you a long time, but are you what are you here for? Are you here yeah. to get fitter or are you here to compete with the people next to you? Yeah. Hopefully you're here to get fitter and the competition comes along the way. Right. That's insane right there. 7,800 pull-ups. So speaking of insane, uh, there's some guys at the gym. Now we're talking about doing some adventure races. Oh, and I got some races. So we have some races coming up, me and you. And we're going to invite everyone to join us, everyone that's out there. But there is a race coming up. They're going to start back up in like March. There's a flat one called the Swamp Fox out in South Carolina. We need to do that because it's flat. So it's easy. Um, oh, okay. <clears throat> some oh, of the guys in the gym want to do this thing. What's that? I want the mountains. I don't need a flat swamp. Okay. Well, then uh, the other one that's right after it is uh, Oak Mountain in Alabama. That's a good one. So we can do that. So this thing right here. Uh, 29029 Everest. Have you seen that? So the height oh, of yeah. Everest yeah, is see. that 30,000 feet. And they do this thing where they go to different ski resorts and they climb the mountain as many times as it takes to get yeah. that in like three days. Um, talk about doing something hard. I'm like, I, I'm interested. I'm intrigued. It's like biting into like black licorice. I'm like, I don't like it, but I kind of want some more. I'm like, I don't know. That, that fennel taste is not good, but what? I don't know. Uh, that, that's interesting. I do like having goals and things like this to reach for because it gives you a destination to kind of look forward to and see. So if you guys are there thinking, I do want to be healthy and fit. How do I do this? How do I motivate myself? One is join a tribe, join a community like ours. The other is have a thing out there in the future that you're going to do. So, um, okay. So let's jump back into this guy. So you've got some, then, Hey, afterwards, you got some core work before yep. we get to the core work. Let's say I'm new. I'm uh, or no, I take it back. Most of the people that we're reaching out to are not new. They've been doing CrossFit since like 2010 and they've probably fallen off the wagon. So they're like, hey, I want to get back on the wagon. Yeah, you looked at this workout and you're like, dang, that's going to take me 40 minutes. 
How would you scale this initially? You said, hey, let's redo some of the pull-ups. What about the run? Would you do anything with that or stick with the run? It just depends on the individual. You know, if you know somebody that gets out of breath just doing a 400 meter run, somebody knows they're going to be out of breath doing a 400 meter run, then go do 400 meter run. If the, the biggest thing here is to stay moving, is to get off the couch, and get moving. It's not to sit in here and compete once again. Find where you are uh, personally and accept that and go go after some workouts. You know, self-pity yeah. doesn't help you get fitter. Yeah. Yeah, you so just have to accept where you are in your fitness and just move forward. You could probably even say, hey, um, a fit individual could do this, like you said, in about 20 minutes. I might just run the clock for 20 minutes and do repeats and be like, hey, it's 20 yeah. minutes, I'm up. I, I moved. And I tell people that at our place all the time, number one, show up. Number two, don't do anything stupid to prevent you from showing up. <laughs> so we just keep that moving. All right, then you got some car, uh, uh, <clears throat> I can't say it, core work in there. Mm -hmm. Um so uh, hollow body holds, we all know that. Russian twist with or without that weight. I love that. Plank to push up, yep. V-ups, side planks, and so left and right, perfect. Now below that, uh, I see, let's see. Oh, that's the same thing. That's actually from them scale. Uh, it's just an outline at the top, and then down here you get like your scoring sections down here. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Oh, I like this, that. So you've got... This has, the, this has the scaling down here. You got your beginner option, intermediate option, and all that. And then that's yeah. directly from .com. I just copy yeah. and paste it from them because... They know exactly what they were looking for. Yeah. They actually have banded pull-ups in here for uh, folks and ring rows. So that's also a great alternative as well. So that's yeah, uh, just something to take with you. Yeah, no, that's good. I, I, we, we, we do not recreate the wheel as well. There yeah. are, <clears throat> there are standard think. scales that we'll use for people. Yeah. But like the other day, um, oh man, too many, too many classes I've coached. What was his name? Uh, Dave. He's like, hey, um, I'm not into the uh, double unders today. What could I do instead? I'm like, okay, here are some options, but the the stimulus for the, the the double unders is this. What do you want to train or fix? And he's like, okay. So we ended up with um, dumbbell presses, light, so he could do a lot of them. I'm like, very good. Let's do that, right? So it doesn't always have to be a one to one or or, or you know the same thing. And if you have questions, go to our, um, this is the, probably the best and easiest way to find us right now because we just don't have a great way to do it. But um, on Facebook, if you go to Garage Fitness Online, you can post in there and we will talk to you. Right now, I'm just adding some things that both Brandon and I are doing. So you'll see there's me lifting. Here's a podcast we did together. Here's <laughs> Brandon and Rich doing the wedding, wedding day wad. Yep. So I put that in there. Um, so you can find stuff. You can hit us there. You can DM us in there. If you got our emails, you can hit us that way. We're happy to help scale. But as we build out the community, other people are going to be able to tell you things because sometimes it's hard to know what you should do because it's your problem. But when you ask somebody else, they're like, what about this, this, and this? You're like, oh, yeah, that's the answer. Okay. So then let's go for a Wednesday, then we'll move on. So on Wednesday, we got um, a, a workout. Give me the description and tell us what's going on here. This one is the tough workout for the week. Okay. It's a 30-minute EMOM. EMOM 30, each minute on the minute for 30 minutes. Uh, you're going to do minute one, 10 hang power cleans, minute two, 12 lateral burpees, minute three, 15, 12 calorie bike. And then it has competitor RX and fitness underneath there. So competitor. Oh, I see right there on the weights. Yeah, if you want to challenge yourself, RX, that's our, like just basically like our performance, like this is going to give you a great workout. And then the fitness is basically uh, just you want you want to come in and just move, get a good sweat going and hit the stimulus what we're going to be at. So when you're doing this workout right here, 10 hang power cleans, 135, 95. I, uh, when I tested this thing out, the, that took roughly 15 seconds, depending, because I have a very slow cycle time on hang power cleans. I don't do the bounce off of thighs and all that. Um, so the, that right there took, you know, 15, 20 seconds. So I get like a one to two, maybe one rest. to four rest, uh, work to rest ratio in that first minute. 12 lateral burpees. Depending on how fast you are for this workout, you got 10 rounds of this. So you're probably not going to go that fast. It's 120 lateral burpees by the end of the workout. That takes you roughly 35 to 40 seconds to complete if you're going nonstop right when the minute hits. So now you got a two to one work to rest ratio coming off of that. And then the 15, 12 cal bike. I wrote this for our members because we all have rogue echo bikes. Rogue echo bikes, the gear is way lower on them. Okay. I use this when I prep when I tested this, I had an assault bike, which the gears are very high on it. So you get a lot more RPMs out of it. You can push a lot harder. So I did 20 and 15. I did 20 calories on mine. 
And there, that was roughly taking uh, everybody like 45 to 53, 55 seconds to complete. Because if you keep a 70 RPMs on those type of bikes, uh, that's going to put you right around the 50 to 55 mark okay. uh, in, in seconds. And uh, so then you have very little little rest right to the bar, picking it right back up again. But overall, you should have almost like a one-to-one work-to-rest ratio within three minutes. And then you're just going to go out to 30 minutes on this. So this is really big endurance, like speed. I don't know. For some people, it'd be like speed endurance, while others might be like strength endurance. Sure. No, I can see that. And I love this right here. So there was a time, well, backing up a little bit, you had said it's fun to see what other people program because you get into your own head and sometimes they have different creative thoughts. And I love to see that stuff too. Um, I got stuck in a rut. And for me, it was a good rut, but I was giving everyone like we would do something like a uh, let's say we do hang power cleans in week one. And then we would have a good percentage because Wattify will build out your percentages based on that. And they'll estimate a one rep max and all that stuff. And then you'll see your percentages based on that estimated one rep max. And then the next week we would have hang power cleans, but we would do a percentage like I love this fitness. Hey, I'm not a competitor. I'm not RX. I'm just getting into this. I'm doing the fitness side of it. 35% of my max cleanser. Dude, that's awesome because now it's right sized for me. What, what, when you say like, I I have trouble telling people this, like 135 for me, that's a heavy load, but for you, you're like, nah, I mean, it's moderate. So it's, you know, but these percentages, they don't lie because your percentage is your percentage. If you want to break it down even further, like the people that are really good at CrossFit, So like my clean is really low compared to what it used to be, but I can still operate at a very high percentage compared to my one rep max. People that are really good at CrossFit, that's what they can do. Like you can put 80, 90% of them on a bar, their maxes, and they can just rep it out for a long period of time. While other people have a lot of trouble with that. And by the end of this workout, you're doing 100 reps. That's why 35% of your one rep max, like if you're doing a workout and you break it down into – what exercise scientists use for like prescriptions when it comes to rep ranges and volume 30 to 35% falls into that hundred rep range. What you want to do 50 reps right around that 50 to 75, you can look at like um, 50% of your one rep max and so on. You can break it down even further or break it up however you want to, but that, uh, that 35% is really good because the first one to four rounds, you're going to feel like it's super light. Even for you, like your first maybe two to three rounds, 135, you're my like, man, I got this. Yeah. And then all of a sudden round four hits, you're like, I'm breathing heavy. Round five hits, you're like, oh, my God, I'm only going to do eight reps. The round six hits, like it just compounds and compounds oh, yeah. until like you get to that seven, eight, nine, ten. You're like, I quit. This is the worst thing in my life. <laughs> While you do that 35%. And you gradually do that stair step in intensity. So one round, you come up here, then you drop back down. Then you go second round here. Then you come down to where you was one. Then up here, and you just keep working your way up the ladder to where that 10th round is challenging. And that's just like when you do rep ranges. Like if we did a 10 rep max back squat, you want those last two to three reps to be challenging. For this, you want to find a load rep range and intensity to where the last two to three rounds is a challenge. That's right. Entire thing. No, we fall into traps like that all the time. So right now we're following CAP, which again, I'm not that impressed with at the moment. I don't know who the guest programmer is, but anyway, CrossFit Affiliate Programming. They threw in a new named workout, Andy with an I, so not me, but Andy. And it's a it's a hundred, 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 hundred of like, I forgot what it was, but it was very lightweight. So it's like, it's like power clean and then, uh, no, no, power snatch, hang clean, something and then a front squat, right? Or sumo deadlift and then front squat or something like that. And I'm like, guys, go light. This is no joke. And they're like, oh, no. I mean, the first couple were easy. I'm like, yeah, because that you're, you're falling into the trap. So, yeah, I, I should have used that number. And I knew that. I just didn't think about it. Like, hey, look at 35% of your one rep max. All right, let me move us on because you got other things that are awesome in here. So let's say I am uh, I, I would like to do some lifting. Do I add, do I do um, the, the the performance and uh, build or is it or build? Like how do I how do I marry some of these ideas up? So what you're going to find in the performance is two days of weightlifting, and that was Monday Thursday this week. So usually Monday Thursday it's going to be Tuesday Friday, and that's going to be like a whole body weightlifting. It's very simple. Like we're doing front squat, bench press, pin lay row, or rows, and then on the other day we're doing deadlifts and strict press on the other days. 
And we're going to gradually build that up over time, working on those. The bound build, you're going to find some Olympic lifting and then a squat and then an upper body push pull usually. And that's how we kind of run that with some accessory work. If, so how would I you know, how would I interweave this? Like, do I do one or the other? Like, no, I, I know that if I'm doing point. hypertrophy, I need to be lifting and not like moving so much. I need rest. Huh. I know that. But how does how does a member or how does somebody like interweave this or just follow one? So if you wanted to do one, uh, say like your main focus is strength work, because a lot of us as we get older, we really want to focus in on getting our strength work done. This right here is something I do personally. Like when I'm at the days that I'm at the fire station, I do only strength work. And then the days off, I do my CrossFit or endurance work. So, and I usually follow, I'm following these right now. So I would break it up. Like if you want to do three days a week of weightlifting, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that's your days of weightlifting. You get 48 hours, 24, 48 hours of rest in between, or 24 hours of rest in between, and you get the weekends off. These right here is going to be a whole body weightlifting session. So you know that you're going to hit every part of the body. I'm a big fan of those. I've always been a big fan of those. I train whole body because everything we do in life is whole body training. We don't ever have a day where we're just pulling pulling everything to us using our back muscles. No. Everything is always up, down, left, or right. We're moving around. So I train that Do you way. superset these or do you do just the clean? It depends, just... it depends on my time. Okay. So like, I know, let's take like Wednesday's workout, the clean waves. I don't have a clock, but I know I'm not resting that much. So the clean waves, like I'll set, I'll set the time up. I got my three sets of three at that 70, uh, 70, 75, 80. And I know I'm just going to three reps, add weight, three reps, add weight, three reps, go back down. Now I'm doing two, 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 go back down, one, 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 working up. It might take me six minutes. It might take me 10 minutes. It ain't going to take me that long, though. It takes me right. about as so much time to recover and know I can hit the reps. And I'm not doing touch and go reps. I don't do those unless I have to anymore. I just pull from the floor. Because what happens a lot of times, the eccentric loadings where we get hurt at, it's lowering the bar back down. Oh, yeah. Then I'm immediately, I'm already warmed up right into the back squats, four by five. I know for this, 70% is not going to be crazy in the beginning, but we're working this up in four weeks. And so by the end of this, it's going to be challenging. You're going to be around 80, 85%. That's going to be tough, but I'm probably going to break that down into every two minutes or every 90 seconds. I'm doing those. And then I'm right into the strict press. And if I have two barbells, yeah, you can superset strict press and deadlifts together if you want to. And uh, clean deadlifts, that is. And then at the end, I just do a circuit of the accessory work because I just I'm a big fan of circuit training. I'm a big fan of keeping your heart rate up, breathing heavy. And when you take less time, the older we get, depending on what your goals are, like if your goal is absolute strength, like I want to be as strong as I possibly can, then yeah, you're going to have to take rest in between sets. Like you got to take a minimum of 60 to 90 seconds, maybe two minutes of rest in between. But if you're looking to be fit, keep your weights down low to where they're manageable and it's not putting you in a... Uh, compromise situation then keep the weights light and move through it efficiently and quickly yeah no that's right that's right so guys you, you can see this right here there's a wednesday and friday and then the last one that we're going to look at here is endurance so this is near and dear to my heart some of these adventure races we're going to talk about eventually and um how do i weave this into it am i doing performance am i doing build am i adding this or am i just doing this or tell me about that so the great thing about endurance, as you know, I'm a huge fan of endurance. I do not look like I do a lot of endurance, <laughs> but I, it doesn't I look like I lift weights. So training. we just compliment each other that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the uh, endurance training, I find that the the more aerobic, and this is proven, the more aerobic you are, the faster you recover, especially in high intensity intervals. Like if we can build that aerobic foundation, that helps build to the peak of performance. And I think uh, these can be done. If you have the opportunity, most of these workouts are 20 to 30 minutes long. So if you have the opportunity to do both, do one session in the morning, one session in the afternoon, that is perfect because your body adapts to the stress you give it. And that's like a, I even had a conversation with a guy yesterday. They were like, well, what do you think about doing cardio before or after a workout? And I was like, well, it depends on what you want. 
Like if you have two hours in the gym and you can do all that, yeah, and that's the only thing you got. But if you step around one hour a day, remember your body adapts to the stress that you put on it. So if you want to be more aerobic, if you do an aerobic exercise, aerobic training session, your body's going to adapt to that. But it needs like two to four hours to adapt. That's right. Then you can come back and then you can do your strength training. And now your body's got that stimulus. And now it's going to adapt from that. Right. And then you repeat. But now, then CrossFit and, has also got its own stimulus, which is a little different. Right. Now, and that, and that is completely true. And that's speaking as a guy that is uh, 50, I know that, like you said, what are my goals? And I have to aim towards those because my body is not like I, I am eating well and I'm drinking good and I don't, I, I got a lot of stuff going for me, but, and I've got time now. All my kids are um, out of the, well, almost out of the house. They all drive. So my time is I could, do, I could literally work out two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening, but I don't have a professional uh, recovery system. So I don't think I could. Now, the beautiful thing is in these adventure races I'm doing, I'm literally just using CrossFit and I go out and do the race. I'm not looking to win. I'm just looking to have fun. If I wanted to be, I mean, the joke at the gym is strength is my weakness. I just not that strong. So I know I should probably take a cycle, take off of everything and do, you know, take Monday, Wednesday, Friday yeah. <laughs> lifting, but I'm too jittery and like, I, I just can't, I can't do it. Guys, <clears throat> know what you want, interweave it and see how it goes. And then this is great. When you're working out from your home, you can do whatever the hell you want, but try stuff and then ask questions. Okay. This is good. I think we're going to do this again and maybe I'll have to I'll pick give, your brain. I give like my personal thing. Like a lot yeah. of people, I just do CrossFit all the time. I'm on a three day rotation right now. Now at the fire station, I do one of our bound build sessions. I might add an in because I'm like every, I'm on one day on, two days off. So yeah. I don't want to spread mine out to nine days for three different sessions. So I kind of put everything together. The days I get off, I pick out an endurance or a CrossFit workout. Depends on how I feel and depends on where I'm at. If I'm at the gym, I get to practice one of the workouts we got coming up. I do that workout at the gym. I might do two sessions just because if it's only 10 minutes, I recover, then do another 10 minutes just to get a stimulus. Then the next day, I'm going to do pure endurance, whether it's rowing, running, biking, something like that. So I just pick and choose. Like I have that rotation. I tried to do like a competitor thing with my schedule. It just doesn't work. But right. I found this works. I'm confident in it. I still feel good in it. And I'm get, still getting results from it. Yeah. And, and I think that's what you got to find. I'm going to make the title of this. What did you say? Your body adapts to the, say it again. I don't know what I said. You, your body adapts to the stimulus. Your body adapts to the stress that you've given it. Your body adapts to the stress that it perceives. Right. I love that. Um, so, guys, uh, Zoom is about to kick us off. I don't know why. I think I have to pay for it to get more time, but it's like <laughs> counting down. I'm like, what is it counting down for? Yeah. Um, I forgot how Zoom works. But adventure racing, I'm going to throw this in there. This is the first race that's coming up. We're going to do this one right here. It's Oak Mountain, March 22nd. It's a 10-hour race in uh, basically Birmingham, Alabama. Put it on your calendar. You and me and probably Evie. She has an electric bike, so she cheats, but whatever. We're going to go do this thing. I got, a, I got the single speed bike from the game. Okay, well, that's fine. I have an extra <laughs> I, <got. laughs> I have an extra bike for you. I'll use Dude, I don't want that. I want to be that guy like, look at that crazy guy. <laughs> I'm okay. I'll race with you like that. Well, yeah, with all the muscles that you're bringing to the game, they're like, he's never going to finish this. Yeah, that's going to happen. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll send you this so that you remember where it is, and then there's a bunch more races well, coming a, up. We should put in the uh, last man standing race that we're going to be doing in January. We did oh. it last year, the LC Endurance. It goes to a great foundation in Ringgold, Georgia, and uh, it's a two-and-a-half-mile loop, and you do one every 40 minutes until you just can't do it anymore. And as you we said, did Ringgold? last year. We took a bunch of people up from the gym. It was a uh, Ringgold, Georgia, uh, LC Endurance, the LC Enduro. Okay, I'm going to put that in Facebook. Great, great, yeah, great race. It's awesome. They cool. did a, they had a fantastic showing. The people there were super cool, especially to us CrossFitters. Like most people look at CrossFitter and there's like, dude, we get these guys out of here. Right. Very cool. I'll get this one going. I think um, Brendan from Wattify mentioned this as well. All right, guys, y'all take care. Remember, we're out there to help you. Um, find us on, uh, Facebook is the easiest place. Take care. Let's see if I can stop this recording.